a program committed to delivering information that's important to you and your community. Hello and welcome again to Life Esteem. Always great to have you as a, a viewer of this program. Today we're going to talk about a wonderful program. We're going to talk with uh, the, the program director, who is Krista Farah, of the Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven Program. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. I think I said it right. <laughs> and I had a chance to visit with uh, Krista probably about, what, two weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, so, and, and it was a wonderful uh, facility, and you're doing a great work over there. Tell us all about the Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Susquehanna Safe Haven is a men's shelter, mm -hmm. and it's unique in that we service men with a mental health disability yeah. and mm -hmm. chronic homelessness. Mm -hmm. So there's no deadline or timeline that the men can stay in the mm -hmm. facility. We help them with goals and housing and, and jobs, mm -hmm. different things that we can. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't as uh, familiar with this uh, particular offering, which is an excellent, uh, you know, program and everything. Um, but you try to keep it sort of down low, is that correct, in terms of how it's uh, operated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because our, our clientele has a mental health diagnosis yeah. and, and different issues, um, we try to stay directly out of the public eye just so that they can, you know, feel secure that they're mm -hmm. getting the services without, you know, being, having the stigma of mental illness put yeah. on them. Mm -hmm. Now, how long has this program been in, uh, here in the community? Uh, 2009. 2009, oh, that long. When it was, yeah, oh, the, right you know, when they open the doors. Sure. Yeah. How great of a need is it? I mean, you know, I noticed that you were pretty full. Today. Yeah, we've yeah. been mm -hmm. full for the year that I've been the program director. We can house 25 men. Mm -hmm. um, the need is definitely there, mm -hmm. uh, not only for individuals with mental health needs, mm -hmm. but the, popu the homeless population in Harrisburg alone. Yeah, yeah. Now, Nate was sharing with me, though, that they have an opportunity. I think there's two levels. People could come in just for homelessness, and you have an area that they can, especially during the inclement weather, the winter and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you have people that actually have uh, rooms that they can rent for a certain period of time. Yeah, well, our program has three Three. Three different levels, basically. Okay. Um, we have the, the dorm area when individuals are just coming in off the streets. They right. don't have to have income mm -hmm. or, or anything. Okay. Right. Um, when they do receive income, be it Social Security or, or working, mm -hmm. they can move upstairs to a private room. And, mm -hmm. you know, we charge them just 30% to stay in the room. We still mm -hmm. provide dinner for them, and they mm -hmm. have cable and, and Internet right. and everything. Um, in the winter, we have hazardous weather and we okay. open up the other side of our shelter to house 23 to 25 individuals. They just have to come uh, line up. It starts, me, I think it's December 1st mm -hmm. through okay. m March 1st, okay. and March. we can, you know, house them through the winter months, hazardous mm -hmm. weather months. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, the men you mentioned, they have to have that diagnosis, that mental health diagnosis. Yes. So do they have to come through a particular unit like CMU or something like that, or how do they, how do they get to you? Um, a lot of our individuals do come through CMU. Mm -hmm. It can be self-referral. They oh, can yeah. stop in. They can call. Oh, right. mm -hmm. um, I've even faxed and emailed applications. Once you fill out the application, mm -hmm. um, I review it, and we try to do an intake interview. Sure. And then once we get to that point, we just once we have the opening, we just set everything up with mm -hmm. documentation and all mm -hmm. that just to get them in. Just to make sure. Mm -hmm. it, and I know this is a tough, you know, population to work with and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the local community, are they supportive of the work you're doing? And, and can, is there a way that we could better support you in terms of uh, the needs of the men? Um, the, the local community is, is always good with okay. us. Um, when we have our fundraisers and, and different okay. things, they, they come out. Luckily, we're part of Christian Churches United, uh -huh. so you know we're affiliated with a lot of good right. ch churches and organizations. They mm -hmm. help ministries on 19th Street. Mm -hmm. So when our individuals are ready to leave, we mm -hmm. can just get them over to help ministries, and they help with rent and security deposit mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. CMU mm -hmm. helps a lot. Okay. We we have to get most of our guys linked with that just for referrals mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm and just support in the community because a lot of them have stayed away for so long. Sure, sure. What's the youngest uh, you've ever had uh, in the facility and how young can they be? Uh, they can be 18, okay. 18 until. Our population is a little bit older. They're mm -hmm. like maybe 30, 35 
plus. Yeah. Um, we've had some younger guys in. Uh, they they're a little bit more motivated, okay. so they they come and go fairly fast. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And let me just ask you this: I don't want to get political, but you think so many years ago when they closed the state hospital, mm -hmm. did that really put a more need for individuals having to have a safe place and somewhere they can go? Um, I think now with my population, it could have played a, a role in yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just overall the breakdown of the mental health system in, mm -hmm. in Dauphin County in general has has led, to, led that. to that. Yeah, okay. it's it's just a, a, a vicious cycle where, you know, if they're not their mental health needs aren't taken care of, they're more prone to go to prison. They're exactly. more prone to yeah. be homeless. They're it, drugs and alcohol. Yeah. You know, it just it cycles around. Are you seeing all communities, all racial backgrounds, all ages? I mean, uh, not ages, but uh, if, you know, incomes uh, coming into your uh, facility? Um, for the most part, yeah. We mm -hmm. we incomes is usually zero when we get uh, them. We're mm -hmm. getting them at after our definition of chronic homelessness is mm -hmm. at least out for 12 months, if okay. not longer. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of them have zero income, zero income when they come to us, and then they're applying for social security and. When they feel safe and stable, they're looking for housing and looking for jobs. Yeah. yeah. You know, you often wonder, um, are most of your, your men local, or do they come from surrounding areas, or is it a combination of such? It's a combination. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. We have a, a, maybe a half and half split. Okay. You know, a lot of the mm -hmm. guys have come to this area because Dauphin County is known for having mm -hmm. good programs to mm -hmm. help um, with Bethesda Mission. Mm -hmm. You know, they have that program to help them. And then once they complete that program, you know, they're still in limbo a little yeah. bit. So they come, end up coming to me. I was surprised. I, I did, you know, work 10 years with United Way. I was surprised to know that a lot of our more rural areas don't have these facilities and, and services. Yeah. And so they find this way to Harrisburg, is that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're actually looking into that with the Homeless Coalition to, okay. to mm -hmm. put shelters in rural areas. Mm -hmm. and, and even somewhere as close as like Upper Dauphin, sure. they don't they don't necessarily have this yeah. services. So, you know, they, they probably have family members. And do you often wonder, like, what's the disconnect? Is that the family just can't uh, seem to handle, you know, their particular needs? Or, or what happens there? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cases, the, the individuals have gone through some sort of trauma. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's usually family related, yeah, if not do. drug and alcohol, and the mm -hmm. family has to distance themselves from them. Mm -hmm. But we encourage with, um, Mr. Art, who also works at the sure. facility, we encourage the men to reach out to their families, their children, whoever they can, just to build that connection mm -hmm. again, if it's repairable. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of them go to counselors and therapists in a community that, yeah. you know, if it's a goal that they want to connect with their family, we definitely support it. But mm -hmm. a lot of our, our, our guys come in with no connections okay. to anyone. Well, this, None. Yeah. yeah, they're just by, the, they've been by themselves mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. Now, how long have you been at Safe Harbor now? I've Safe been Harbor. here for a little over a year. A little over a year. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. did you got started. And your background, how did you get involved with uh, uh, this? Well, before this, I was the program director for a homeless veterans program. Oh, all right. And okay. I had a lot of different counties. I didn't have Dauphin County. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I wanted something local, so I wasn't driving most of my week away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. I, I seen, it actually wasn't a position when I started working with Christian Churches United. Mm -hmm. I was just doing part-time case management oh, right. over at Help Office. Mm -hmm. So when this became open, you know, I met with Daryl, the executive director, oh, yeah, sure. and, mm -hmm. you know, he said, I think this would be a good fit. And All right. mm -hmm. I tried it out, and it's been a good fit. It's been good fit <laughs> so for far. Yeah. Yeah. Contrast uh, the population you used to work with, who are the homeless veterans, yeah. and the population you're working with now. Mm -hmm. What's the, what do you see as a difference? Um, homeless veterans, because their mental health needs mm -hmm. are a little bit different mm -hmm. from, from the guys I'm servicing now, mm -hmm. it was, it, I was more outreach with that. Like I would go to camps and I would go under bridges just mm -hmm. to make sure that these guys wanted, you know, knew the services that the VA offered them. And mm -hmm. I had a, mm -hmm. a lot of vets didn't think they were even veterans because mm -hmm. they never went to war. Oh. So it was a lot of, you know, that, and they were, mm -hmm. they were pretty far gone. But mm -hmm. this population, they, they know more of their services and, and how they can get right. help. It's just a disconnect when they go off meds or mm -hmm. right. any life crisis that they get derailed. Mm -hmm. You know, when I visited with you that one day, uh, I asked you the question. I said, well, you know, do you ever have issues with the men, you know, 
maybe being disruptive or mm -hmm. physical or anything like that. And you said, no, pretty much they're, they're pretty, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cooperative and, and all yeah. of that. But that's the image that I think a lot of people, you know, the general public might have that, oh, these would be really difficult people to work with. But that's not what you find all the time, is that right? Not at all. They have, they're very humbled, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because we, we offer them so much. And mm -hmm. again, a big part of our name is safe. We're, right. We provide them a safe environment. Okay. and. They, they're very respectful to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I work shifts by myself all the time. I'm yeah. never, I mean, you know, it's, it's like a, a big dysfunctional family at Safe Haven. You know, yeah. they, they all get along. Mm -hmm. The biggest argument we have is over a remote. Mm -hmm. You know, they, when they don't, can't agree which game to watch or uh -huh. something. Yeah. But other than that, they're peaceful. Right. You know, they're just trying to maintain and, and get to their next level mm -hmm. in life. Good. But you know, one of the things you had said, um, we talked about mental health and some of the things that may not be in place that needs to happen in this county. But I think it's across the country. Yeah. In regard to some of these things we're hearing so often about individuals with mental health crises and not being identified mm -hmm. and not getting services. So there's something in the whole system that's not really coming together well. Yeah, I, I'd agree. It's uh -huh. all the way from um, the way hospitalization yeah. is, is treated. Mm -hmm. What is a crisis? You know, um, mm -hmm. you can we had an individual that was in, in my opinion, severe crisis. He wasn't getting out of bed. He wasn't eating. Wow. He wasn't bathing. And I'm calling the agencies. I'm mm. like, can we have him hospitalized? Like, he mm. needs a, a jump start. He needs yeah. to have his right. meds reevaluated. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to sleep your life away, Absolutely. you know? So even that, it was a little backlash where, well, he's not a harm to himself or others. He is. He he's is. not getting out of bed. <laughs> that's not okay. Yeah, that's, that's a harm to himself. <laughs> yeah, that's a serious harm. Um, right. So it's stuff like that that still needs, I think, mm -hmm. evaluated, you know, to, to provide better services. Uh, I, I think we that. have some, mm -hmm. there's a stigma associated. Yeah. Definitely it, yeah. a stigma. Um, mm -hmm. it, I am proud that it, it has, it, it, it's at least being talked about right. now. Yeah. You right. know, especially in African American Thank you. community. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the, oh, they're crazy or, mm -hmm. oh, this mm -hmm. and that. It's, it's being talked about, you Definitely. know, men have depression, yeah. men get sad, men need to go to therapy, right. you know, mm -hmm. it's, with my population, they're like, oh, you know, the phrase man up. Yeah. yeah. If it was that easy, we wouldn't have the, th these issues going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. You ever have family members, though, uh, you know, some of them are fathers, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, did you ever have family members try to find them or try to intervene or help in any way, or is that pretty much just a foregone um, conclusion is separate now? Well, we have had an individual who okay. pretty much burned his bridges with his, his son. Okay. And, you know, you could tell that it bothered him because he would always talk to me about mm -hmm. his son mm -hmm. all the time, whether it was baseball games or if he seen right. pictures of my children, it was, mm -hmm. it was always coming up. So I said to him, have you, have you tried to call him? And he mm -hmm. goes, I don't know what to say to him. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know what? Wait till his birthday. Call and just say happy birthday right. and mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. And he called, and they're still talking to this day. It's not all the time, mm -hmm. but at least they're talking. He, he went 14 years without talking to him. Oh, my goodness. So, years. Yeah, and now I think they just call, like, on holidays. Days and, and different yeah. At least they call. Yeah. I'm also intrigued by the gentleman who didn't get out of bed. Did he eventually get up out of that bed? Well, how did you I, resolve something like that? I you know? fought, and I went uh, to the ER with him. Okay. And okay. we got him impatient, and his meds changed, and he is looking for a job right now. Okay, yeah, okay. wonderful. Yeah, he goes to Clear mm -hmm. Link every day. Okay. Looking Mm -hmm. for any type of employment so mm -hmm. yeah. he's doing a lot better yeah you know people want to uh we saw a video long ago where we talk about the throwaway yeah uh, something like that and this gentleman had gone through the same type mm -hmm. of cycle and he was basically making the point with his you know documentary that um too often we just push those folks aside mm -hmm. and, and we don't think they have a voice anymore mm -hmm. we don't think there's anything you know your facilities where they need to be and that's it mm -hmm. but that's not it because they're always going to be part of a community isn't that right yes one way yes. shape or another and, right. and they have to thrive to want to be a part of that community right. yep. and mm -hmm. you know and at my facility I, I really appreciate that there's no deadline like it yeah, isn't like six that. months and you have to go yeah. okay. sometimes six months on a med you don't know how it's going to make you feel, yeah. you know, That's so they right. can do med changes while they're here. Mm -hmm. They can get as stable as they need to mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you know, they feel comfortable going back in the community because it's, it's reintegration, mm -hmm. basically. They, right. they haven't been a part of the yeah. world around them mm -hmm. in a long time. So there are a lot of 501c3s out there, a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned the churches come in in various yes. ways. So what service would you love to see coming to your facility and provide something mm -hmm. for the men that's not currently happening? 
that maybe someone out there is, you know, watching this program, they might think, hey, we could do that. You know, what things are missing? Um, missing right now is a, a real connection with okay. the men. Um, not that we want a big group to come in and right. host a barbecue or anything, right, right, you know, right. but mm -hmm. just to build mm -hmm. a one-to-one -one connection with maybe two of my 25 guys mm -hmm. would be like great. mentoring or something. Mentoring yeah. or even just a friendship. friendship. Yeah. You know, they, they tend to isolate and mm -hmm. the only individuals they talk to are mental health professionals, be it myself, mm -hmm. my staff, or therapists, exactly. or doctors, yeah. you know, just to have a regular friend in a community would be good mm -hmm. for some of these guys. And, yeah. and then we have needs as, as great as um, the upstairs. When an individual moves out, mm -hmm. we'd like to be able to provide like a, a welcome package so that they could take oh, with like, oh, right. yeah, like a, mm -hmm. a broom, a mop. You know, they're moving right. into their mm -hmm. own house. Right. They have to learn how, you know, mm -hmm. remember how to maintain it, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, and then a church to adopt a room or any organization. Yeah. When the individual moves out, we have this blank canvas of a room. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, make it a little bit more comfortable for the individual moving into it. So, you actually mm -hmm. showed me a room where a gentleman, yeah. had, I think he just kind of moved in and yes. you said the church came and painted and did yes. different things. It was yes. great stuff. So that's something that can be done for mm -hmm. the persons who are watching this program. Right. If their church uh, mm -hmm. or civic organization or, you know, social club would like to do mm -hmm. something, uh, here's mm -hmm. a wonderful opportunity. That's a good event uh, activity for Dave Caring. Wonderful day of caring. Yeah. Uh, do you know about day of caring through the yes. United Way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so that might be a tremendous thing that mm -hmm. you know they can do. I yeah. also like the idea of the mentoring or the buddy you know mm -hmm. piece where there are so many different uh, fraternities mm -hmm. and other organizations mm -hmm. around and men's group within churches that maybe each man could come in and you know match up with another man as much as possible, become a friend. Yeah, you know? yeah. That would, and and that would help them moving out and mm -hmm. if they needed to just call a friend and right. you know I, mean, I always tell them when they leave they can definitely call me okay. mm -hmm. but I don't know how much mm -hmm. advice I can give you when you're on your own mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. having a, a male point of view would be mm -hmm. really really big help. I'd like to encourage you to uh, contact or I'll have the two of you meet the pr director of the program and they're located up on uh, Derry Street mm -hmm. and Pat used to be a part of the board when it was the program for female offenders now mm -hmm. it's just simply mm -hmm. called the program and they have a mentoring program like this. So, and you know, I'm actually, you know, hoping to be working with them uh, in the very near future here, where it's a sort of a buddy system, and you kind of, you know, check in with the men, you call them, see how they're doing, mm -hmm. give advice, all that stuff. So that's a program that's already existing. So maybe the two of you could kind of right. talk and, you know, match up, because <clears throat> it's all about helping people, that's right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is good stuff. That's yes, about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They say it takes a village, and it, it, it really does. does. Not mm -hmm. just for children, but you right. know, yeah, for all to, of us to keep the community. <laughs> Yeah. safe and sound, you, mm -hmm. you have to look out for each other. And one of the sad realities, and you mentioned it earlier in our conversation, is that uh, oftentimes when the men or anybody goes, uh, you know, unconnected, mm -hmm. they may end up in the system. Yeah. And the system can be very unkind, you know, to mm -hmm. persons who are already have a mental, you know, uh, illness, and uh, it just becomes a revolving door. Yeah. So we can eliminate that if we give mm -hmm. them, you know, the kind of work that you're giving them and then some, you know, aftercare. Uh, so. And, and that's really up to all of us, not just, you know, your staff. How yeah. large is your staff, by the way? Uh, I have 10 staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah 10, because right. we, we're 24-7, oh, so okay. we have three shifts, and, okay. you know, it's it's only two full-time individuals, myself and, yeah. and Art, who's the case manager mm -hmm. assistant. So okay. um, Art and myself help with all of the go work and, mm -hmm. and connecting individuals, and mm -hmm. my staff is really excellent, be it cooking meals all night for them yeah. you know they prep mm -hmm. the dinner for the right. next day okay. or okay. or giving them advice or just a connection like a peer type connection mm -hmm. but because we're staff we have to you know uphold sure. boundaries exactly. and stuff so that's why I would mm -hmm. love for yeah. an outside group to help and I gotta say Art's a great guy and is it okay to say his last name yes oh, yeah, sure. Art Miles that's my <laughs> man Art, yeah. Art does good and mm -hmm. I think he's a perfect match for your your you know population yeah. Uh, he has that perfect temperament, and he knows what he's doing. And he yes. shows a strong male presence so, yeah. mm -hmm. as well. So he's a good guy, yeah. And he has a passion for helping. You can tell. And it shines right there on yes, right. And he does work yeah. at Bethesda Mission, I believe. Yes, that, he works it? there yeah. at night. Also. Oh, he does work there as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Art's a good guy. And that's what you need. You need the right fit. You need mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So you have a staff of 10. See, Art told me he was the only one doing anything. No. I'm yeah. joking. I'm <laughs> Sometimes. But that's good stuff, though, yeah. But okay, so, and I was also um, surprised when I saw your facility because there's no markings or anything there either. And yeah. so, and that's done purposely, right? So, yeah. Because you just want to give people their uh, privacy and confidentiality mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, I and I don't even, when, when the guys ask for letters to, 
take to employers or anywhere, yeah. you know, I'll ask them, is it okay that it says safe haven? And, mm -hmm. you know, because then it, that becomes a conversation they have to explain. Mm -hmm. right. So we try to keep it as anonymous yeah. as possible. So how do you get the employers then to look at your, your clientele in a different light? I mean, are they, mm -hmm. first off, have they been open to your clientele? And if mm -hmm. so, you know, what works for them? Um, you know, to be able to hire your, your, your men. I think a certain level of compassion has okay. to come through when I do mm -hmm. the interview. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a strong sense of wanting to help and seeing the potential in individuals. Mm -hmm. And when I interviewed the, the newer staff that I have, uh -huh. it, it, it came, it was shining like a bright light out of them. You know, mm -hmm. they, they mm -hmm. got the vision, they wanted to help. Yeah. You know, they right. they see these individuals as having a hard time right now, yeah. mm -hmm. but they know there's potential. Absolutely. But you said you asked the uh, the person, you know, your your um, your client, mm -hmm. whether or not it's okay to put safe haven, safe harbor, mm -hmm. safe haven uh -huh. on there or not? Because do some employers, you know, shy away from you know persons who have been in this particular situation, or have they been more helpful? Uh, a lot of times, like I've made really strong connections with local temp agencies okay. mm -hmm. and local mm -hmm. warehouses because we're, we're, we're located right by the state farm yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And there's the whole you know, street of, sure. of uh, warehouse work back mm -hmm. there. So I've done my duty to go out and meet right. HR. You know, that if you need help, I have at least five to six individuals that are looking for work. I can't okay. guarantee they will get here on time, but they will be <laughs> up to be at work. Right. Um, so it's it's advocating, you know, yeah. and I haven't gotten any rejections because they're from Safe Haven, yeah, but, yeah. you know, if they read that, I don't want that to be the reason they're turned down. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, won't be a bad and I would hope our right. community is educated enough in this area, mm -hmm. you know, especially with returning the returning population, which we call people coming out of prison these days. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'd imagine that your, your men have a multi-layered needs. Some of them may be coming out of prison. Right. Um, they can mm -hmm. be, w yeah. because mm -hmm. it, we serve the chronically homeless. Mm -hmm. um, they would have to be homeless for a little bit once returning from prison. Yeah. But mm -hmm. a lot of our individuals mm -hmm. have backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. I remember down at the farm show they used to have. I don't know if they still do. Mm -hmm. It was a big homeless. Uh, what was it like a conference? conference? Yes, yeah, certainly did. It was yeah. really well done, mm -hmm. I thought. But did you ever? Uh, I know it's been that? years ago. No, I yeah. I wasn't in the area. I just moved oh. back here a few years ago. So oh, okay. Oh, okay. As did far as what they did, yeah, 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 yeah with yeah. homeless, I worked in mental health before I moved. Mm -hmm. um, but since I've come back to Harrisburg, that's when I my mm -hmm. professional shift towards homeless and you know that population. Happened. So you're originally from Harrisburg? Yes, I'm originally oh, okay. from. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. You did tell me. Which school did you go to? East High. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from here. East Side, that's yeah. right. East Side. Yeah, okay. And we have to mention that your mom and daughter are over here. Yes, right? yes, they came Hi. to support. I'm you right now, right before the show goes off, I'm going to have you come over and stand behind us so you can say, look, they're both shaking their head. No, you know you want to come over and be on this. It's the least they could do. <laughs> the least they can do to support you. Most definitely. So many people are so shy on the cameras. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty it's beautiful, like it. though. So glad that you're here. Thank you for coming to support your daughter. Have you had any long-range plans in regard to getting a larger facility? Have y'all been t talking about that at all, the Christian Churches United or uh, anything? Christian Churches United, they, well, Daryl, he wanted, I know they're in talks to maybe have a shelter open in the West Shore. Oh, all Possibilities right. of mm. stuff like that. Okay. He's also started a network, I'm probably going to mess up the name, but mm. it's Action Compassion Action Network, okay. and it's a lot of different organizations come together, mm -hmm. and um, if someone has donations, mm -hmm. you know, you make a phone call and it can be dispersed to different oh, places okay. where they need to. Mm -hmm. So he's, he started that a few months back. How does spirituality great. handle uh, the gentlemen come in, I'm sure, mm -hmm. from all different types of backgrounds, but how do you handle their spiritual needs? Mm -hmm. um, you well, because churches or anything? Like yeah, so. well, we encourage, you know, mm -hmm. for them to go to whatever service Right. They prefer whatever okay. denomination they are. Okay. Um, we, because we are partnered with the food bank, you know, we have certain guidelines that we can do. But I just oh. encourage them that mm -hmm. if you know you're used to praying over your meal, do that before you come out, or say your silent prayer. But mm -hmm. as a whole, we we can't do it. But we definitely support mm -hmm. whatever spiritual background they Very have. Very good. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. So churches, and I know some churches are involved, and they come yes. in. Do they actually offer like Bible studies services? 
Or they pick people up and take them to service. What, what does that do? We have a few churches that the, the individuals are members mm -hmm. of that okay. Sundays and I believe Wednesdays the vans mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. and pick them up. Okay. Um, we also have an in-house type of, uh, mm -hmm. we call it Bible review. So yeah. it's, mm -hmm. you know, ran by the, the members of the mm -hmm. house and they, they meet every Wednesday for that. Okay. Yeah. 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 The coming and goings of the men, are they able to just, let's say I just decide I want to go out somewhere, do they have to have certain hours that they check in, check out, or how is that done? They can come and go as they please mm -hmm. during okay. the day. Um, we do have curfews, though. Ah. Uh, for mm -hmm. downstairs individuals, it's, mm -hmm. you know, 10. Upstairs, it's midnight, unless they're working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they can request passes and stay overnight wherever they want. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like their own home. We just need mm -hmm. to know a little bit. Yeah, so I'm sure. not mm -hmm. calling around looking for individuals. Right. So. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking some questions that I think, you know, the general public might mm -hmm. want to know. So, for example, do some people have vehicles or do they have bus passes or how do they get around? They, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. they, because most of them have um, disabilities, we, they utilize the cat transportation. Mm -hmm. The bus comes and picks mm -hmm. them up. We have um, a few individuals that have their own personal vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's a bus stop at the end of our block, so yeah. they use that also. I'd love to see one day, maybe, and maybe it already happens every now and then, local barbers just come in and cut hair for free. Yeah, that's what I, I was mm -hmm. trying to start that, mm -hmm. you know, because they have a program like that in Philly for mm -hmm. um, homeless haircuts, okay. I believe mm -hmm. it is, yeah. and he's doing really good work. Okay. And I think it'll be great Definitely. for I that. Like that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of a guy who is a very good Christian man in the community and hires a lot of people, and uh, he may just be up to that, huh? I'll say a word to him. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that would be indeed. great. Yeah. I, we tried that, and mm -hmm. I also work with um, I have my personal trainer, Brent Mosley. Mm -hmm. I had him come out, and, you know, when you, you know, the body heals oh, yeah. itself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you're healthy and you, you look mm -hmm. good, you know, it, it helps a lot. Yeah, and not does. that medication doesn't, but, exactly. yeah. you know, we, we try mm -hmm. to help them in a full circle everywhere. Excellent. So. Good stuff. Great stuff. Well, I know we're going to run out of time very quickly here. So, uh, you know, for persons who just maybe want to just talk to you and get to, you know, know more about mm -hmm. how they can help, how can they reach you? Um, they can give me a call at the office. Mm -hmm. The number is 717-232-5029. Okay. And um, myself or my staff can answer any questions. Okay. It is a process. It's not just a drop yeah. in. I can move in next right. week. You <laughs> have to fill out an application mm -hmm. and, you know, we have an and take interview and then we go forward. Okay. So again, that number is 232? 717-232-5029. Fantastic. Well, I sure hope that the community will respond yeah, and, is. you know, assist you in any way they possibly can. It's about the men. You have about, what, 24, 25 men? 25. 25 yes. men at any given time. So a great need for our community. We hope that you will help mm -hmm. out the Susquehanna Harbor Safe Haven. Uh, you know, that those are our family members, and we got to do all that we can do to help them, and I know we have the will and the spirit to make that happen. I want to thank again uh, Krista Farah for coming on. Mm -hmm. She you. is the program director, and we know that you're going to do mm -hmm. uh, all that you can do to make community better. Yeah. So have yourself a great day, and remember, help somebody along the way. We'll see you next time on Life Esteem. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you, Krista. Thank Krista. you.